Hi, I'm Stefan, the BMW DIY guy, and are you a car enthusiast like me? And are you frustrated that you can't see, you know, your intake temps and other important metrics going on in your car? I'll show you how to add a gauge so you can. All right, so let's talk about this project a little bit before we do it. And the reasons why you may want to do this yourself. I know I'm certainly excited about it. I've got my brand new G87, and for all the giant new screens that you get in all the BMWs, there's some basic functionality you can't see, and there's a great way to add that feature. So this is the new display from CanCheck. This is going to go into that left-hand vent here on, on the driver's side, right-hand side if, you know, if you've got a UK car. But this is a really easy install and it's going to be able to give you the ability to see a lot more information on what's going on in your car. So if you're an enthusiast like me and you're looking at your intake temps and you're looking at your boost levels and all of these different variables and factors as you're working with your car, especially as you're looking to upgrade and do other work, you want to know this information. This is a great way to be able to see it. So I'm going to walk you through that install. It's really not that hard. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. Okay, y'all, so let's jump in here. Now, we're actually going to have to lift our entire display to get to the channels back behind it um, because the display is going to go into the vent and all the cabling is going to run back behind the display over to the body domain controller or BDC over in the passenger footwell. So taking this display up and out is not all that hard. You just have to remove some trim. I've lowered my steering wheel and there's a C-shaped piece of plastic that fits over the top of your steering wheel. Now, mine is loose because I wanted to show you what that looks like but you just use a plastic trim tool, never use metal, ever, ever, ever. So I very carefully got a little bit of gap here on this edge, and then in my case, it snaps in down here on the bottom. Now, some of the G80s might be slightly different and this whole collar may be one piece. In my case, it's two pieces here on the G87. But get that in, pop the up leading, upper leading edge here. You do the same on the other side, and I actually just work my trim tool down here to pop out the bottom part. Now. You can set it out and pull it down out of the way. And if you look back in here, you'll see two T20s tucked way, way back here and here. So big long bolts, you'll hold, hold the display in. So go ahead and pull this collar off, pull those two screws, and then we're gonna pull the cover over on this side of the, of the display. But I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so a little bit of a diff difficult camera angle in this case, but here we are on this main support strut for your display. Use a plastic trim tool under the corner right here and pop up this cover, go ahead and set it safely aside. Now, down in here, you should see another T20 right here. Now, when you pull this bolt, because this main strut is what's holding it on, make sure that you don't mix the two up. You might have bolts that are of different length uh, from the other two you pulled on the other side. So go ahead and back out this T20 right here, and you should be able to, to at that point, to very gently lift up the display. But I'll show you what that looks like uh, once we get this bolt out right here. All right, y'all, so I kind of hate showing something after the fact. <laughs> and obviously my display is out, okay. But as I was setting up for the shot and I got a little pressure on the display, it popped out. So, and in some ways, this might actually help me explain what you're trying to do because it's, it's kind of a complex motion. So first of all, obviously I laid, laid down some painter's tape underneath my display because the last thing I want to do is score up my carbon fiber as I pull this out. Okay, but if you look at the back of the display, you'll see there's a series of hooks, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, as you go down the display. Those hook in here, 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 and here. So there's four of them, right? You've got your screws where you can see here and here that came out and your mount that was up here. But once those screws are out, the only thing that's holding it in are those hooks that sit back in here. So now the F87 is a little bit different from the G80s and G82s because we have a shorter dash and uh, our display sits back into the dash a little bit more than the G80s do. Um, the display though is exactly the same. And the process to get it out is exactly the same. Now, if you're doing this yourself, so what I did was, uh, I've got the painter's tape and under the edge of the display right here, um, I wedged, covered by a towel, I wedged a plastic trim tool underneath just to apply a little bit of up pressure, okay? I, because you can potentially do this with two people. You can do it by yourself as well. Actually, I prefer to do it by myself just because I think I can control the amount of force that we're putting on the display. So. 
I wedged a plastic trim tool under here to provide a little bit of up pressure. I did the same thing on this side and this gap right here with a plastic trim tool covered by a uh, microfiber towel. So now the whole display is pressured up a little bit. Then I grabbed the top corners on each side, so the top corners of the display, and pulled outward. Now, it's really stiff. Keep in mind, your display has not been off since the factory and it's intended to be locked in here really tight because these hooks go in and down. So when you're pressing up, it helps the hook come up a little bit and then you have to pull the display out and forward to get the hooks to come out. And it came out really quickly. <laughs> so I wedged the display up and I was like, okay, I got my hands on the corners and I rocked it a little bit and I'm like, and uh, it came right out. So be really careful while you do this. Obviously this is not an inexpensive item. So be very careful while you do this. But the good news is you can see it's out. Then you, you don't unplug it, you don't do anything else. You can just simply lay it up here on top and make sure it doesn't slide. But you can put it up here on top and then you're good to go. And then let's go ahead and move over onto the vent. All right, so now we're gonna wanna take the vent out. You wanna take this plastic piece and use a plastic trim tool, which is really gonna be a friend through so much of this and just pry outwards. And it's got a whole series of clips that help hold this in place and you're just going to work on it until it pops out and it should kind of lean outward just like that. Okay, that's enough now that we can get to the vent. Now the vent itself you're going to want to pry outward until this comes out and loose. And you can always use your plastic trim tool, get it, get back behind here and get this to come free. Okay, so go ahead and work and get your vent and get that to pop out. I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. Now, when you do pop it out, there, there's a couple of uh, wire connections that are, that are here on the back of the vent. So go ahead and pull, unplug those as well. And I'll show you what the vent looks like when it's out. All right, so as you can see, the vent is out. It's a little bit easier to show you this with it's out because there's a connection on both sides. So you have this really delicate ribbon style connection that comes up to this plug right here but there is a normal wire plug that comes up out of the wiring harness and plugs it right here. So go ahead and unplug that. And then you've got one that comes up here underneath as well. So I'll go ahead and unplug that. That was really, really stiff. So be very careful to get that out. Okay. So now that the vent's out, uh, we're going to look at actually prepping over on the passenger side and removing your, some of the kick plate plastics so we can get to the fuse box and uh, uh, body controller over on the other side. All right, so now we need to take off some plastics to, to get to the body domain controller, which is behind this, this uh, footwell plastic right here. You have to take your door sill off first. Now off camera right now, um, you know, back at, at the back of the door, so back on this side, it hinges up into the plastic that comes down from the back seat. So you actually want to lift this end first. This does tend to be really, really stiff. So you just want to pick it up, pop it free of, of, this, uh, of the front plastic, and then just pop this the rest of the way off. Now, what is going to happen is you can see there's one clip here and there's a bunch that are missing. You're gonna get clips left behind here and you can see some of them. You can just take a pair of pliers, pry them out. These tend to be a little bit in here pretty strong. Sometimes you can get them out by hand like I just did now, but you can just take a pair of pliers, pull those out and put them back into the plastic trim. So take this safely and set it aside. Same thing for this door trim or the side kick piece here as well. You're just gonna get your fingers in it and pry off. It's got some plastic rivets that hold it in place. But before we do that, let me get this piece out of the way. We've got this, this kick piece right here and this is this upper section. It's kind of a C shape. It attaches on this side, goes back behind and around. It goes around your airbag right here, your shin airbag. Now there's these little clips and I've already taken this off. There's these little twist clips that go up into place and you twist them uh, would be clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on how you look at it, but left, and then they'll just unhook because they've just got a little bladed set in. Now, I found in my case, mine were so tight, I couldn't turn them by hand. So I actually used a pair of needle nose pliers just to grab them very gently and turn them. And then this will come loose. So you can take this piece, work it down. You've got uh, the light here as well. So you're gonna wanna unplug that. And I've also got a connection here where this cable clips on. So now you can take that kick panel out as well. Now, once all that's out, you can take this piece and you take this off. You just reach in, and my shoulder's probably in the way, I apologize. And it will just pop free really nice and easy like that. 
So now we can get to the BDC right here. I'm gonna change my camera so you can see it a little bit better. There's also a fuse box right here as well where we're gonna be plugging this in partially. Now, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about running the cabling and we have to have all this off to do it. So let's get set up, I'm gonna move my camera. All right, so here comes kind of an interesting thing to explain. <laughs> I can show you really easily. Now you can see my flashlight right there that I've jammed up into the corner um, and it's just jammed in there so I can see. Then you're gonna look right down through here. I really can't show it much with the camera. It's gonna be really hard to see with the camera. But if you put your head right here and you look down, you can actually see the flashlight. You can see light shining all the way up through. This is the path that the cable's going to, going to want to go. So what you're gonna to want to do is take something to fish with. I actually use a metal hanger. <laughs> I was my poor beat up metal hanger I've used so many times. So I've straightened out a metal hanger so it's nice and straight. And then you're gonna, you're gonna, be look, you're gonna look from above here and you're gonna look down and you're gonna feed in a fish or metal hanger down towards your light. So as you hit your light, you know you've come out the other side. I'll show you how to, how to pull your cable back through, but you're gonna wanna fish down through this hole. That's how we're gonna get the cable down here to the footwell and over to the fuse box in the BDC. So let me show you what it looks like once I have my hanger in place. Right. So here we are with the fish in place right here. And if you shine the light, you can really clearly see a just straight path all the way down to your light all the way down to the end, and I have the hanger coming out this side. What I usually do is I'll bend a little teeny tiny little hook bend in the end, helps me hang on to plugs, right? So you've got your wiring harness that you're gonna wanna move. So these are the ends that are gonna go in the display. So you can very carefully, you know, tape, tape this to your wire, you can hook it, you, whatever it is, just to be gentle. Now, whenever you're pulling or fishing wire, be very careful when you do it, because if you get snagged up on something and you pull too hard, you could break a wire or snap a plug or something like, else like that and make it a lot harder. You don't want to do that. So go ahead and connect this to your fish, very gently feed it back up and get it, get it up through this hole so you'll have, you'll have your plugs here out this end and you'll have the other end down here. I'll show you what that looks like when it's done, and then we're gonna go install the display into the vent. All right, so as you can tell, the cable's through. It was really simple. Um, I just used a little bit of electrical tape, uh, taped the plug to my fish, very gently worked it back up. If it snags at all, just work on it just gently to get it to come free, but that took like five seconds. You can see the end out here at the other end. This is the, this is the end we're gonna be plugging into the two jump cables on the BDC and up, up into the fuse box. But let's go ahead and grab our vent and we're gonna be installing the new display into your vent. When we look at this here, so this is that vent tunnel that we want to take out. And there's these little lever clips. There's two right here that I can see that you, I've kind of partially pried up already. And then there's two on this side as well. And then this tunnel, your vent tunnel will come out. You, you, always, want to, you want to, always want to use a plastic tr trim tool on plastic. You may end up having to use one as a wedge, you know, to get to wedge it up underneath and actually keep it in place as these come up like that but you'll just want to work that away. And then the vent, the vent tunnel itself will back out. Okay, it's still hung up here on the side just a little bit, but just get it just very gently pry those plastic clips and pull this tunnel off. Okay. So when we look at this, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, these black posts that come back through. Now you can use a Dremel tool to cut them off. I found actually just a sharp shop knife would work. And I just, cause the plastic isn't all that hard. So I just very carefully cut through the tops of those posts with a sharp shop knife. Now you don't want to cut any of the rest. Okay. So once you have that done, it just pops right out like that. Okay. So now we're going to take the new display and put it into place. All right, so once you have that plastic trim out, you notice that there's a little wedge notch on this side, which would be the vent dial side. You're gonna to wanna to take that side, kind of rock that in place and set that in. And then you can snap the rest of the display into the vent assembly. And it will just pop into place over these little ridges and clips and it should hold in just fine, okay? So go ahead and get your new display into place. Okay, so here we are looking at the body domain controller here in the passenger side footwell. Now, obviously I've peeled the carpet back. Now, and now the M2s, unlike the G80s, have a big foam block right here. So I've taken that foam block and I've, I've pulled it out. So we have room, because we're also gonna wanna get to the ground post that's back right there and here in a second. Now, your BDC has a cover over the top of it like this. You wanna pull this big wire off the clip. There's also another on a post right here. 
Once you do that, you can release the front fingers and then this will come off and up and out of the way, which will give you room to move up here on the BDC. Now, I do have an extra wiring harness in here. All of these blue wires, go ahead and disregard those. That has really nothing to do with this project. It's for something else. So if you don't see those, don't be surprised. Okay, now, we're looking at block eight. If you look at the top of the block right here, there's a, they actually have a legend. We're looking at for COM8, which is usually the center one right here. And BMW's changed this plug. These horseshoe collars used to be you'd depress on the top and pry down. Now you squeeze in the middle as you pull the collar down. Then the collar will pull down and the plug will back right out just like that. Now, this actually has two locking tabs on either side. You're going to want to use a pick tool or something similar. Slide it between the sleeve and the inner part of the plug, and this outer sleeve will come off. I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. But we've got this out, okay, because we're going to be jumping into two wires here in this block. So go ahead and slide that sleeve off. I just slide in the pick tool right here and on both sides, and then this outer shell, this outer sleeve will come off. All right, y'all. So now that you have that sleeve cover off, and here is the internals of block eight. Now, you can split these two apart, which I actually tend to like to do because it makes it a little bit easier to work with. It's not as bulky and you don't have so many wires in the way. And you can check orientation on how it splits, right? So you can see how in this orientation, the gray is on top. Now, when you put this back together, it really only goes one way. <laughs> but always double check your orientation when you go through it. And the other thing you wanna do, if you're gonna to wanna to split this apart, go ahead and pull off the extra wire tape that's right there. And this will just simply slide apart, which I'm gonna have difficulty doing with one hand right at the moment, but this will slide apart like that. Okay, so now that that is pulled apart, what you're gonna to wanna to look at very, very closely, and it's gonna be hard to tell on the camera, but on this end, it says 37, and on this end, it says 54. So we're actually looking for pins 48 and 47. So what you'd do is you'd count back, 54, 53, so on, and go all the way back till you get to 48. 48 is white with yellow, right here in the middle. 47 is yellow with black. Now, if you have different colored wires there, because BMW sometimes chases, changes these wiring harnesses, if you have something different, reach out to CanCheck, and they will confirm which wires you need to tap. Okay, but that, those are the ones that you need to, to de-sleeve. Now, when you look at this very closely, there's a little locking tab. It's very hard to see, but there's a little locking tab. You depress on that little tab. I use an angled pick tool. And so when we do this, this is not hard. You just have to be careful. Be very, very careful as you do this, because this is an easy job to do. And if you make a mistake, it's a hard thing to fix. What you don't want to do is strip one of these wires. So you take an angled pick tool, come down here to 48, depress right there on that silver tab right in the center, and very gently pull the cable back out. Now, I'll set up my camera a little bit different to show you, see if I can show you what that looks like, but you're going to pull it out very, very carefully. Now, it might hang up twice. So there's the big locking tab right here in front. You can see there's kind of a second row right here as well. I've had these locking tabs sometimes hang up on that second part. So then again, you reach in very, very gently with your pick tool, depress the locking tab and back the pin out. So, so white with yellow right here, pin 48. Go ahead and back that pin out. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so now that, that I have that out, let me take the, take the new wiring harness. We're gonna take green. So that's white with yellow, that's pin 49. We're gonna take the green wire in the correct orientation with the tab up and slide it so you should hear a click and it's in there solidly. I can pull on it, you see it doesn't back back out. Okay, so now you're gonna to wanna to do the same on pin 47, which is the, the, the black, uh, the yellow with the black tracer. So go ahead and pull that out and then you're gonna put the yellow wire in place of that one, okay? So we've got our two original wires out of the harness that are now out. We've got our two jumps in, the green goes into 48, the yellow goes into 47. Now 48, remember, is the yellow with white. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the provided end of the plug here, because this goes into this end of the harness so that it all gets connected together. I always check the plug orientation first and say, okay, so the plug goes in in this orientation right here, which would put the yellow with white matching the green. So you insert the ends in, and once that's in, you'll snap that little cover down and snap it into place. Okay, I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, it's not hard. Just go ahead and just make sure that your wire orientation is right. You don't you don't cross them. So white with yellow goes to green. 
yellow with black goes to yellow. All right. All right. So now that you have this plugged together, this is all done. You can put the shell back on top of uh, this block eight and then snap it back up into place. What you'll do is you'll fit it up in and then snap that collar up. Make sure that that, that plug is intact. Now you've got two ground wires here in the back. You've got um, one solo one here, one for the big block here. Those are 10 millimeter nuts. You'll want to back one of those nuts off and go ahead and put on the ground wire here uh, and then uh, secure the nut back down. Then we're going to take the, the power wire. We're going to put it up into the fuse block. Let me rearrange my camera and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, y'all. So looking up at the fuse box, I have pulled fuse 61. So it, as you look across right here, and I will include the fuse diagram so you can see it. But if you look right here, you'll see a brown fuse, a, a pink fuse, and what is missing, a brown fuse. <laughs> That's fuse position 61. Because what you do is you pull out 61, and you look at this at, at the new power cable here. This front slot is open, so you want to take out the existing fuse that's in, in that position, push it into place in this additional slot right here. Okay, and then we're going to put it up in this orientation. So the cable towards the body, the fuse is pointing towards the front. This will go up in, into that position 61 and will power the display. At that point, all of this is put together. So. Uh, what we're going to want to do is put the cover back on. So again, hinge from the back and come forward. So put that back into place. Uh, we'll put the foam here back into place. We'll lay our carpet back and we'll put all the plastics back. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the plastics back on this side before I move over to install the display. But we're really close because we're going to run the rest of the cabling. But just reverse the process you had with all of your plastics, right? So put, put the side panel on, put, this kick, put the kick panel on, pull out any of the additional... Uh, rivets if you need it. Put your base plate back in here. It hinges to the back and comes upwards and turn those plastic turns uh, to get it to secure into place. And then this side will be all back together. Then we're going to move over to the driver's side and we're going to run the rest of the cabling um, across the dash and we're going to hook the new display up. All right, so we're back here on the driver's side. So go ahead and just run the cable along and we're going to keep it nice down and low out of the way and run the end all the way here to where the display is going to be. Now, when you plug your display in, the plugs only go into, into self-evident places. The, the plugs only go into one place. But we also have a USB cable if we ever want to plug in and uh, code or change the display itself. So the smaller box end, that is a, that's what goes in the back of the display. And I'm going to run the cable down, down beside the kick plate over on this side, just in case I ever want to do that. All right, so the new display is in. We'll test it here in just a second. Um, I'm confident that it's going to work though. Now let's go ahead and put our main display back in. It's just gonna be a reverse of what you did before where, where you're gonna start kind of high, tip it back into place to get those hooks to settle in and then set it down into place. Be really careful as you do it. Make sure that, that the frame lines up with your holes for the display here and here. Now remember, you've got four different screws, one, two, and then the long one in the back of the frame of this are all the same. The shorter one comes forward um, into the display, so don't mix those up. This looks so good. I am so excited to have this in the car. So when it first fires up, you'll get a menu. It'll ask you what motor to pick. So I picked the S58 file, since so this, is, this is in my G87M2. And these are all the default screens at this point. So I haven't changed or customized anything, but it's running great exactly as I would hope it to do. Obviously it's a touch screen and has lots of different functionality and I'll, I'll do a video that shows all of the different functions of this, of this display as this is primarily just about installation. So yeah, this is really cool. <laughs> I'm really excited about this. So go ahead and clean up, wrap up, go ahead and put your tools away. All right, y'all, so all done. And as you can tell, this is a cool project. I'm really excited about this and I love having this in my car. So now make sure to watch out. I'll do a review video of all the different features and different customizations you can do. But for now, the install is done and it looks really, really good. So go ahead and clean up, put your tools away. As you can tell, this is not a hard install if you just take your time and work at it very, very carefully. Thank you to CanCheck for making such a fantastic product. And you can order these in the US from IND Distribution. Great company, I love those guys.
Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please make sure to click like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference to my channel and I honestly would appreciate it very, very much. I have a ton of new projects coming, G87 and more. I can't wait to show you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on my next video.